What up, it's your boy t in Reaction, Day Wrestling Wednesday, you see the co-star right here, TJ, and we're about to check out another video from Wrestle Premiere, this is about the A-Press Predator Marine Orient, this is about one that's going to defy, they're not going to defy some of the folks that a lot of folks think about Ray Orion. So I always hear that Ray Orion's better than hero. He's, he's, he's more better than hero and all this, stuff. blah, 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 blah. So, you know, even he was on feature on that Dirty E. Evovich documents, which I'm not going to react to or, or watch because, you know, I'm not going to encourage that nor get no, maybe think differently about about that. I'm going to keep my same thoughts, thoughts and represent for the good guys and baby face to, to the infinity and beyond. But this one can defy some of the talks of Randy B. Buzz as a Hail to the Bayface because Ray Orton has some great Bayface moments during his during his career as well too. And 2014 was definitely one of his best Bayface run of all of all his career as well too. Though 2014 was was awesome with the fuse he had with the likes of Brock Lesnar, the authority, the the Seth Rod that he was uh at his exit from the Authority and many others. So and I think even Chris Jericho and many others as well too. I think I recall I think it was. AJ Styles was another one of his uh fuse or that was later on. Either way, we're gonna check out Ray or in turn face in 2014. Let's get it. Randy Orton's time as a face had run its course by 2013. WWE thought a heel turn would result in a fresh change for the Viper as early on he wasn't struggling but Orin was not on the same level he was from 2010 to 2011. He was always in and out of the main event scene with no title reign to show for it. Guys like Jack Swagger were challenging for the title at WrestleMania, his name wasn't even in contention from the summer of 2012 to the summer of 2013. It probably had to do with the wellness policy violation. The money in the bank opened a lot of possibilities and by the end of it, Randy Orton was back at the forefront in the main event of WrestleMania. The heel turn did wonders for him because as I said, he was not struggling, they just chose not to put him at the very top. His spot in the authority and storyline was mostly safe until Seth Rollins joined the group. Yeah. This put things in jeopardy because Triple H and Stephanie were mostly favoring the young guy over the established 12-time champion. Mm -hmm. The preferential treatment of Rollins was slowly starting to piss off Orin, not to mention Rollins dropped him with a curb stomp yeah. on Raw. He was boiling, his demeanor oh, was becoming yeah. unpredictable and Triple H had to calm him down. Mm -hmm. The fans were loving this though. The COO wanted to deal with this at a later time, but Orin wasn't having it. He basically disobeyed okay, the authority sure. and in turn made himself a dead <laughs> man walking. The Viper's actions the following week only added fuel to the fire and after demanding a match against the Architect, it was granted. The man lost his train of thought mm -hmm. and by the looks of it, it wasn't coming back. Rounds ended up winning the match and it was a tough pill to swallow, mm -hmm. but he did come to terms with it for all of two seconds. It was costly. At this point, Triple H was like, screw it. He saved rounds from a punt and after a failed mm -hmm. attempt at calming things down, he was out. This man was full on 2010 Randy Orton. Mm -hmm. Zero logic, all emotion, yep. and in the heat of the battle. He took a curb stomp on the announce table yep. and the game didn't really want to continue, but Stephanie told him to finish this and a friend of old, mm -hmm. the guy he brought in, basically his own kid, he ended up taking out. This was done to give Randy Orton a hiatus. I believe he was, uh, he was shooting a movie. But Orton was away. We all know how the story was going to continue, of course, but it was going to take a while. Randy Orton returned at Fastlane and dropped everybody in sight mm -hmm. except for Seth Rollins. The architect ran away with a look of fear in his face, and this feud mm -hmm. was going to continue. He came oh, out the next yeah. night on Raw to discuss his disappearance. He was fuming and said that this was mm -hmm. only the beginning, and said that it was a state of execution for Seth Rollins. And this is when the authority without the architect came out. Yeah. Stephanie was still trying to get yeah, him back in the authority, but Orton had one intention, to Wait. take out Seth Rollins. It was a situation where they, they were... remember Big Show at the turn forced to take him out and Stephanie was so desperate to move past this and look forward. To him, he'd rather kick ass than kiss ass. Mm -hmm. The Big Show tried to convince him to rejoin mm -hmm. the group, The Authority, but it was like selling out. Stephanie thought it was ironic Orin was taking the high ground because he was committing even bigger crimes in the past, mm -hmm. even to her on multiple occasions. Regardless though, they wanted him to come back home. By the looks of it, it was a no. As they're walking up the ramp, Orin had a change of thoughts. He called for a meeting in the back and when it came time for it, Seth Rollins looked terrified mm -hmm. but was still able to talk about his worries of Orin rejoining the authority. Stephanie was insistent on this but the rest weren't. Her intentions came true though and the authority was back on the same page. Mm -hmm. Rollins so and Orin teamed up in the main event but there were some problems. Woo! The Viper was more experienced and his instinct knew what was about to go down so he wanted to tag in but Rollins ended up refusing to do so and cost them the match. Oh. Right afterwards, the architect was laying in the Not same yet. exact position many have in the past. Jane Jay got involved, paid Whoa. the price, but Orton wasn't going to do anything. Not it was yet. clear, though, Ooh, that at any yet. time he was going to strike, and Rollins was uh, quite weary of that. He, he was well aware of the fact that Randy Orton was a snake. He was going to end mm -hmm. up RKOing him eventually. 
In the meantime, he was by Seth Rollins' side. Orton was officially welcomed back into the authority and all of these guys were talking good, sucking up to him. Jamie Noble had his reservations about him though. The future of the WWE was very comfortable about things and he didn't even consider the possibility of Orton turning on him at this moment. He thought about it last week, but things had calmed down since got, then. His return right to the group here. was met with strong criticism, not from the guys, but the contrary. Orton was trashing all of them. He called yep. Kane a dumbass, Big yep. Show a whiner, Jamie Noble's irrelevant in short. Yep. He didn't even talk to Joey Mercury and Seth Rollins, he planned to make him his bitch. But this was all jokes. Fast so forward to the end of the night, yeah. Randy finally made his intentions known. He thought it was shameful that Rollins didn't think he would do something about oh it. Oh my god, this was had to be the best beat down from a face on a hill. Oh my god, he said, shame on you, shame on you. Beat his ass throughout the whole arena. <laughs> yes, this was this whole it, I, one of my, one of my favorite beatdown of a hill from from Bayface of all time, right there. Yes, <laughs> it was so beautiful. I loved it every minute of it. I remember after that, I be watching that the whole thing numerous of time though till this day. Oh my God, he beat his ass badly. I don't know what I'm saying I'm saying that one little bit, but he beat his ass. He. He followed with a PGP down on the architect. Ooh. The five minute assault with Orin launching him into the announce table, DDTing him on the barricade, and to top it all off, an <laughs> RKO, RKO to the announce table. table. Yes. The authority expressed a deep regret for letting him in, and Orin ended up challenging the architect Seth Rollins to a match at WrestleMania. Yep. This was accepted. However, and Rollins this... wanted to match on Raw. Yes. There was a bad intention there, and Orton was well aware of that. If all five of the authority members come out, he has enough venom in him, and if he gets mm -hmm. taken out, then he'll be even more motivated mm -hmm. to retaliate at WrestleMania. That thought came out true. The authority were here. Mm -hmm. One chair wasn't going to absolve him of this attack, oh, yeah. he was going to go out swinging. Sting, though, was yep. more than gracious to help, and this image is crazy. It's almost surreal, the fact that Randy mm -hmm. Orton and Sting stood in yep. the same ring side by side. That was it's a cool weird. moment. It's, it's very that odd. Cool now, moment. it doesn't seem odd. When you look at it from that time period, you didn't think Stink would come to WWE, mm -hmm. let alone stand next to Randy Orton in the same ring. They cleared house, and the momentum mm -hmm. was still on Orton's side. He was almost unstoppable ahead of WrestleMania, and Seth Rollins refused to come near. He lost a handicap match to the Viper mm -hmm. on the final round before WrestleMania, and that was the build. That's the build. Randy Orton mm -hmm. had an almost uncontrollable rage that couldn't be contained. Mm -hmm. Rollins' status as the face or the future of WWE was coming to question, and it was very one side, which I think is right because they took him out in the beginning. The WWE was clearly thinking ahead here, and Rollins had some other plans so you have to heat up randy orton now every time i see this wrestlemania i'm gushing over it the vibe santa clara california the sun's out man, oh, man it was RKO. perfect as for orton and rollins good the viper changed it up wearing red trunks and elbow pads mm -hmm. and he was basically a modern version of his 2004 self mm -hmm. look wise one thing to notice is that this man was even more energetic mm -hmm. and exciting than previously. He found a great combination on this night of his experienced mm -hmm. self and his young self. Seth Rollins, Ooh. on the other hand, you know 2015 rounds. But the match clicked because it wasn't trying to be anything I'm special. Sure the only thing that was different was, as I said, Orn was more eccentric. He was more exciting. Was. There was something in the air that day about him. And best of all was the mid-air RKO. RKO. I swear, yes. I was wilding on this night. He felt Ooh, so reinvigorated. Awesome, and I don't know what it was, but it was so fresh. It was just his attitude. So what made this match mm. different compared to others was his energy. It was good. You felt that he was more in tune and eager to put on a show. Seth Rollins, though, had the last laugh as he cashed in money in the bank oh, to become yeah. champion by the end of the night. He rained mm. on Rollins' parade saying regardless of being mm. champion, he beat him at WrestleMania. Yep. Basically, he wanted to do it again for the title. Kane had enough of this and demanded mm. respect. And in an effort to test Randy Orton, he made a match between himself and the Viper. DQ finish. Orn was hurting, but he was prepared mm -hmm. for the number one contender's main event. This yep. match was chaotic. Everyone was involved, <laughs> but Orn stood victorious yep. for all of five seconds because Rollins hit the curb stop. Mm -hmm. Both men had a confrontation the following week over the stipulation, mm -hmm. and Rollins had his choice. The RKO was banned. And this Ooh. man was more comfortable than a baby at night. But now, it was Orn's choice. He wanted to take away Rollins' best weapon. The authority. the authority. So he chose a steel cage match. Mm -hmm. He flipped over rounds, threw J and J security yep. around, and sent them running. The RKO was going away for extreme rules, so Orn decided to pull something straight out of the Attitude Era. A night full of chaos. Mm -hmm. He gave everyone a preview of extreme rules. Yep. Rounds came out and said he's the best at this game, and he had praises for Randy Orn, but assured him he won't be the champion. He told him to get it all of his system, and he was like, say no more. I'm gonna oh, argue yeah. everyone yep. I see. Best oh, of yeah. all, that's, the, that's when he RKO. Anybody, any anybody who who got it that day, man. Oh, I remember that. 
to RKO Seth Rollins before Raw ended, and that's exactly what happened. He RKO'd the nude, he yep. slayed her in the back, yep. the miss, and mm -hmm. Seth Rollins was so distracted yep. by the drama with Kane mm -hmm. that he completely forgot about the mm -hmm. Viper. He made good on his promise, Triple H was mad, Kane was elated, and yep. Grand Yarn was in a nice position yep. ahead of Extreme Rules. Okay. Their match at Extreme Rules didn't really hit that hard. It's unfortunate, but the yeah, steel cage kind of hurt these two. It was supposed to prevent the others from entering, but that's exactly what. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh, I'm trying. Sorry. Alright, I'm back. So, yeah, um, I had to take a little made up. Mom, mom, mom was available. Did, did, his mom, mom, his mommy was available taking a look at him. So. Anyway, left off. Yeah, I remember this when he was in the Archeo barrage right by because he couldn't use the Archeo at the uh, at the pay per view match. Though, yep. So let's keep going. Got about the Viper. He made good on his promise. Triple H was mad. Kane was elated, and Grand Yard was. Oh yeah, that's when Kane was starting having a little riff with uh with uh Seth. His position ahead of Extreme Rules. Okay. Their match at Extreme Rules didn't really hit that hard. It's unfortunate, but the steel cage kind of hurt these two. It was supposed to prevent the others from entering, but that's exactly what happened. But as I said, Rollins and Orin were just better suited in another situation. Uh, it would have been better if they were actually facing off in a, literally an Extreme mm -hmm. Rules match. I think that would have made more sense. Match-wise. Story-wise, Orin, of course, wanted to prevent the authority from interfering, so that made sense. Rollins RKO'd Orin to steal the victory, and it would have been better if it was another match. Orin wanted a rematch, but the problem was Rollins turned him down. Roman yeah. Reigns wanted a title match too. Kane saw things differently and was willing to give them a chance. The fans were going to choose them, and when it came down to it, they chose a triple threat match. The Viper was more than confident about his chances. Roman Reigns, though, was quick to shut him up and made mention of their history in the past. Problem was, Randy had 12 world championships, so he's used to the situation. He actually won matches involving the world title. They had an even bigger problem, though, because Dean Ambrose got himself a title shot as well, so it was a fatal fall. Four-way match. Very exciting match at Payback. Fatal four ways always hit, but this one was a hidden yeah. gem. It, it really was. It's pretty damn fun. You should go watch. I watched the first video. Of course, it was nice. It was a W match. Rollins retained the title mm -hmm. to move on and continue his feud with Dean Ambrose, whereas Orin yeah. went elsewhere. Following Payback, Randy Orton slowly developed a feud with Sheamus. Mm -hmm. These two were having intense brawls. Sheamus tried taking out Orin after his match with Kane, or during his match with Kane, which was a no DQ match, and he disappeared. And upon his return, Orton dropped the Celtic Warrior with an RKO. He wanted to rip the Mohawk off his fat head and shove it up his ass. That's exactly what he said in a promo, and this led to a match at Battleground. They had a decent match at Battleground with Orton winning because Sheamus had the money in the bank curse. Their feud is mostly consistent of six-man tag team matches. Orton was usually on top, but Sheamus hit him where it hurts most. Okay, this is how it goes. The Viper had gotten himself a title shot against Seth Rollins for the main event of the August 10th, 2015 episode of Raw. Orton had his hands on the title during the match, but Sheamus cost him the match. He tries cashing in, but the the Viper rebounded nope. with an RKO, so they were equal. Their match at SummerSlam was once again decent, but this time around, Sheamus beat Orin clean, which was crazy. Mm -hmm. Crazy because this man was losing every match, and here he is being Randy Orin. And it's not like Sheamus wasn't an established star or anything like that. It's just Sheamus was very uh, cowardly as Mr. Money the Bank. Mm -hmm. This feud wasn't really detailed. Both men only interacted in matches. Very rarely would they speak. Otherwise, I would have mentioned it for this video. Orton won the rubber match on the September 7, 2015 episode of Raw to move on. But right after the match, the lights went out and the Wyatt family respawned. Wyatt went for strikes. Strowman choked him out, slammed him on the mat. And Randy Orton was yet another victim of the Wyatt family. JBL explained things. So at the time, Ambrose and Reigns wanted a partner for Night of Champions and Orton was a potential candidate. Upon Orton's return, he saved Ambrose and Reigns from an attack and cleared house. Yeah. The feud was supposed to transition towards Randy Orton and the Wyatts. Roman was busy with Bray, whereas Dean and Orton were dealing with the other three. Both men had trust issues, Dean more so, and Orton literally said he can't even trust himself. But right afterwards, right. Orton suffered a shoulder injury in a tag team match against the New Day. This was a big injury. It wasn't supposed to be as big as it once looked, but it was. On this injury, the legend killer said, and I quote, I had a match October 12th in Chicago. My shoulder got stretched back and I had a repair 12 years ago that was destroyed. I had a little pain, got an MRI, and was told they had to fix my shoulder again, Orrin explains. I had a new guy do it and had a stabilization done that they do to rugby players get, and there's some tough customers. This came at a terrible time because WWE was preparing for WrestleMania 32. John Cena got injured, Seth Rollins, mm -hmm. Sting, that's why Shane McMahon returned. It was oh, tough, yeah. and I'm sure the Viper would have been in a marquee match. 
There was a rumor at the time he injured himself taking the trash out. The Wrestling Observer reported this, but I didn't see much in it. Just wanted to mention it. Randy Orton missed Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, and most importantly, WrestleMania 32. A lot had changed since Randy Orton got injured. AJ Styles debuted, yep. end zone cast were on the main roster. Chris Jericho had an entirely new character, and things were already stacked in the summer of 2016, yet you add Randy Orton. Upon his return, WWE oh, had already yeah, announced a match between the Beast, Brock Lesnar, and himself for SummerSlam. As strange as it sounds, this was a very fresh match. Orn's first appearance came at Battleground. Uh -huh. What was more shocking than this match happening was Orn wearing pants here. Orn was so gracious and humble about being back, and most importantly, he was motivated. He was so excited that he didn't mind sharing the ring with Chris Jericho. Y2J was a bit worried about taking an RKO and threatening to hit a code breaker out of nowhere. He relayed Orn on what happened in the past year, and best of all, he wanted to give him the gift of Jericho. Oh, <laughs> he got scared. Orn said he looks like Ellen and was warned about Brock Lesnar. <laughs> And basically, Chris Jericho's like, Suplex City was on the horizon. But this is where Jericho got curious. Why is it that both men have been in the company so long, yet they never faced off? And claimed Orn was scared of Brock Lesnar. For him, it was about having an epic return. Facing Brock Lesnar is necessary. He can't face a random like Fandango. And this shut up Jericho. So he told him what's gonna happen at SummerSlam. Brock is gonna take him to Suplex City. Was this a problem? No, because he was prepared to take 20 suplexes. But all he needed to do is hit one what RKO. RKO. No enhancement needed. Now it looked kind of stupid hearing that but it was clearly a reference to Lesnar you see Brock Lesnar failed a drug test ahead of UFC 200 Chris Jericho is a spokesperson of Lesnar called Orin a stupid idiot he claimed that these were his words so he was going to be exempt for taking a beating and he started pressing Orin to hit an RKO ah nope huh there it is <laughs> RKO out of nowhere very entertaining segment Chris Jericho was in amazing form at this point, you could do no wrong. Randy was welcomed back with open arms by the fans, and he returned to the squared circle as a member of the SmackDown roster. The draft and brand split were in full swing. He joined a core group of veterans such as Kane, John Cena, and The Miz. Speaking of The Miz, Orin's first match back was against him later that week. Miz was absolutely dominant, but all Orin had to do yep. was hit the yeah, RKO like yeah, that. I thought he was going to Booker T Miz and was going to wait a minute to pin him, but he ended up hitting another RKO mm -hmm. to win the match. By the looks of it, the man was in form. But what did Paul Heyman think? You guys oh, know how yeah. he starts the promo, promoting the That promo and then he hit the RKO. Woo, I loved it. Brock Lesnar. He shockingly said that Lesnar is going to entertain the fans. Not in the traditional way that WWE does. It's politically incorrect. It's violent. He said that Lesnar doesn't need to step up to the new era. It's the contrary, the opposite. The new era needs to step up to Brock Lesnar. There's no attempts at courting favor from Lesnar, none of that. And talks about Orange shocking the world are ridiculous. He hears voices, well, how many tell you Lesnar's gonna take you to Suplex City? If you're not, well, his mind is filled with nonsense. If it's the opposite, then Orn should listen to Heyman and said what's gonna happen at SummerSlam. He shouted that Orn will never hit an RKO on Lesnar and lo and behold, an RKO <laughs> out of nowhere. I can't overstate how awesome this moment was. It was random, it was it. sudden, it was something straight from the 2000s. Loved the it. fact that they actually pulled a surprise on, oh, man. This is, this is what it's all about. Like, if they do this every once in a while, it's nice. And they were doing it in the beginning of the brand split. It was like, hey, we want to show you guys we actually changed. But they did, of course. And Lesnar was almost ecstatic. Everything about this program was exciting. It just was. It was hype. In an effort to prevent a situation like Raw, security were in place for Orin's match with Fandango the next night on SmackDown. He was doing business as usual when Lesnar ran in and dropped him with an F5. Both mm. men shared the accolade of being two of the youngest world champions, and Randy said that he lost respect for Brock when he left. He felt that he wasn't the same guy that he thought he was after leaving. He's like, oh... Lesnar turned out to be the guy that I didn't think he was. Brock, on the other hand, saw the Viper as someone who was beneath him. He's a mega superstar. Orin, he's a star. Their RK was a sign. He wanted hey, Brock to know. This is time when, when Lesnar was holding that belt hush, man. Ugh that he's the man problem was the beast didn't see him that way he's just a man and Heyman described him as a surfer that meets a shark Orn was eager to kill the legend of Brock Lesnar and when asked how he was gonna stay in form ahead of SummerSlam Orn assured everyone that it takes one RKO to get to Viperville That's Alberto one. Del Rio thought it was a joke like Disneyland so Orn wanted to give him a VIP ride Del Rio pushed Orn very far isolated that arm and even got himself disqualified but the RKO got him out of a tough situation on the final raw before SummerSlam Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman gave Gave their final thoughts on SummerSlam. Before Heyman could speak, Heath Slater of all people interrupted. Now this guy was so damn oh, desperate. Yeah. He was trying to find any way I to get a contract, I'll even if he had to piss off Brock Lesnar. Promo. Slater asked for a chance to face Brock Lesnar, and it was all jokes from their side. Heyman moved on like Slater was a jobber, and he roared over being disrespected. He's like, hey, what is up? He knew he would get his ass kicked, but he had a family. Lesnar knew where he was I'll coming from and kid, said yeah. that he's got kids too before bringing him into the ring, all to tell him that he doesn't give a sh yeah. about his kids. Lesnar gave him two options, and even though Slater made his decision, he accomplished nothing. Mm -hmm. Now that was over with, 
Heyman spoke again. Now, he had to sell the fans on the match and how good Orin is. Problem is, Brock doesn't believe anything he says. Nobody could stand up to him, not even a 12-time champion. Very simple build for the match. They were keeping them separate a lot. I think it would have been cool to see a brawl, but it is what it is. This match was something of epic proportions. Randy Orton, one of the very top guys in WWE, a man that yep. reigned atop the company in Lesnar's absence, and Brock Lesnar on the other side, a behemoth, a man that topples any challenge that comes his way, and I personally don't remember my prediction for this match, but I had high hopes. That's what it comes down to. It felt like a match that was too big to fill. You know those type of matches. Now let's talk about it. Lesnar easily took control. He threw Orin around repeatedly with the German suplexes and I lost count. This man was tossing him around like he was nothing. Orin didn't put up much of a fight. He was being bullied around, but all it took was one RKO on the yeah. announce table. Brock was so out of depth at this point, he took a second rope DDT and RKO, but he still kicked out. Brock yeah. quickly rebounded with an F5 and delivered some rough shots to the face that busted Randy Orin. Yeah. This led to the referee stopping the match and awarding the victory to the Beast, and even then, he continued the assault leading to Shane McMahon coming out. Lesnar ended up dropping him as well, and it was a strange match. I didn't like it. It was paced horribly, and yes, Orton did have his moments, but it, it was didn't. like, like I said, pretty much he's trying to keep that belt on, on Brock the best way he can on some, on, on the for whatever fuck reason. And it's why Dub don't like him as well, too. So Live yeah. up to the hype. Not to mention, he suffered a concussion, and he suffered a concussion the hard way. Lesnar literally ripped him open, forced him to bleed, and they did it the hard way. It's crazy how they actually booked this match and allowed for Orin to get hurt like that. It's very strange. I believe Shane McMahon was supposed to face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 33. They were starting to build the program up here. But, man, Randy Orton really got shafted here. I think that's a reason why he got that super push later on. It's to owe up to this problem over here. Uh, I, I just didn't like the way the match went. And he doesn't need help, you know? It's Randy Orton. At the end of the day, Randy Orton's a 12-time champion. He does not need help. But in a situation like this with a guy who is a little bigger or stronger booked than him, I think mm. it should have been a little closer than it was because Lesnar basically decimated and destroyed him. I just yeah. didn't think uh, it was a good match. Now, there's a counter to this. This is one thing to mention. It's understandable why they did it. You see, Brock Lesnar just came off of a UFC 200 victory. They're bringing him back to the WWE. Obviously, he's going to destroy one of the biggest wrestlers. It makes sense. Which leads me to another point. Why have the match? Randy Orton returned. He needed momentum, obviously, because at mm -hmm. the end of the day, he's a returning star. He's right. going to bring a lot of value to the SmackDown brand. This being Why Vince. The match? Answer this that, being Vince. I'm assuming they That's needed my a answer. big marquee main event. My answer, this being Vince. You can't just have Finn Balor and Seth Rollins main event, which you could, obviously, but they probably didn't see it that way. So... I was happy they booked this match, but timing was bad. If this happened a year later, I'm pretty sure it would have been better because they didn't have to, like, protect Brock Lesnar as hard as they would have. They were going to protect him. He was going to win this match, whether it's somewhere in 2015, 16, 17, 18, or even 19. He was going to always win this match, no doubt about it. But I'm sure it would have went better in other years because yeah. in 2016, there was a UFC element. So he was always going to win. On from here, went on to feud with the Wyatt family. I was actually going to include it in this video, but things got too complicated. I'll eventually do it, of course. Orange return was hindered by an injury. Who knows what he would have done at WrestleMania 32. Who knows if he would have been a face, but I just want to talk about it here. So, yeah. Oh, what would you guys think of Randy so, Orton? yeah, definitely. This was like he had a... This is one of his best years as, um... As a favorite face as well, too, as well as you compare this 2004 one. So, yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying? Just for, you know, injuries hitting him a little bit. He still, this is definitely one of his top base baby face for error as well, too, though. So, yeah, other than that, like I said, Orton can be good as a baby face, too. He ain't, he ain't less, oh, Orton's better as a heel. He's better as both, all right? He's better for the heel, for the heel fans, but he's great as a baby face, especially for the baby face fans like myself. So, other than that, though, I don't like when people say they only good for heels only, you know what I mean? Like, it's like you're depriving face fans from rocking with them. That's all. Well, other than that, if you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's your boy T-Person, and off one love.